guys welcome or welcome back to my channel it is me legs and i would absolutely love it if you would like share comment and subscribe this all helps my content it all inspires me to keep creating content and overall it just makes it so that my channel can grow and i can connect with more of you guys today i am back with another tea with legs video okay you can probably already tell by the title what we're going to be talking about and i will end off talking about my first initial thoughts on cowboy carter i've already given it i think three listens now so I have my takes, you know, I'm not a music reviewer, so it ain't gonna be you no know, none of them fancy shit. But I will give my first thoughts on the album. However, we have a little bit more pop culture news to go. Let's begin. J Lo. And what was your go-to order at the bodega? My go-to order at the bodega was ham and cheese on a roll with an orange drink, if you know you know, and a small bag of chips. That sounds like the J-Lo special to me. You want some tea? I love some, thank you. So everyone knows, I'm walking here. What's something else that real New Yorkers say? F*** you. <laughs> oh man, let me tell you one thing. Uh, you can't be from the Bronx today. I'm not gonna lie to you. Like, I don't even respect, I'm still Jenny from the block anymore because I don't know what block you was on where you think a ham sandwich and an orange drink you talking about if we know we know we don't know anything it's mad orange drinks that doesn't make sense so we don't know that and to say that what else a new york new yorker says is fuck you is crazy because everybody says that what about your what about come on it's mad shit that we say as new york people what the fuck are you talking about j-lo what are you talking about? Like, for real. Like, this is, this is crazy. So, as you guys know, well, maybe you don't know, but J-Lo basically is going through the ringer. Uh, she recently released a new documentary that she revealed that she actually paid for. There were multiple celebrities that she asked to be on the documentary who basically told her girl, like, I'm busy. I don't want to be on this. Uh, she also released a new album with visuals that flopped. I think that it... 38 was its top spot, which is not great. And now basically JLo is also going to be canceling multiple dates on her tour amid week ticket sales. Let me read you a little bit of this Variety article. So Jennifer Lopez has canceled seven dates of her first North American tour in five years in support of her new album, This Is Me Now, and its pair of companion films. The dates spanning August 20th to 31st in Cleveland, Nashville, Raleigh, Atlanta, and Tampa, New Orleans, and Houston were listed as canceled on Ticketmaster on Wednesday. The Cleveland and Houston dates apparently had been removed from the itinerary earlier as they were part of the tour's originally announced itinerary on February 15th, but are no longer present on the site at all. An updated itinerary can be found on her social media accounts. While the tour is still scheduled for 30 shows, large numbers of tickets on most of the tour's dates remain unsold, judging by the seating charts of Ticketmaster. <sighs> Look, I'm just going to say this. First and foremost, I want to say, I'm not going to sit here and cap like J-Lo didn't have a popping career in the early 2000s. J-Lo had multiple movies. J-Lo had multiple hits in the early 2000s. I think the problem is now is that J-Lo doesn't realize, like, girl, you are not Mariah. I'm sorry. You are a pop girly. You're not Mariah. And I also think that J-Lo, like, isn't particularly an artist that has an audience. I feel like even in the early 2000s, people weren't like, I'm a J-Lo fan. Like, I feel like people were like, okay, Jenny from the Block is a catchy song. Um, on the Floor, is that another one of her songs? I feel like the problem is J-Lo doesn't have a targeted audience. And I think because of that, J-Lo doesn't realize, like, girl, no one's buying tickets for your tour like that. Um, I think J-Lo, if she was going to go on tour, her best bet would have likely been to pair, like, how Wu-Tang and Nas did their tour, which I went to, and it was great. That arena was sold out. 
but I'm assuming that if either Nas or Wu-Tang went on tour by themselves, they wouldn't be selling out arenas like that. But because they collabed, it was a great tour. I think, unfortunately, J-Lo doesn't really have anybody that I feel like she's like that with, but I think that would have been her best bet is to try to collab with some other artist and then go on tour. I think J-Lo just has to be honest with herself. Like, girl, you're almost 40. It's two, two, uh, 2024. No one's listening to your music like that. And that's okay, but like, let's just be for real. So that's what's up. J-Lo's canceling them tours, girl, because it's it's not happening. It's not happening. So the next story I want to get into is Diddy, okay? If you know, you know, Diddy's going down. You know, put that man under the jail. Hey, whores, bitch. Young Miami is next on a motherfucking docket. Apparently, Miss Mamas was Diddy's worker. And, um, you know, like, the S work? Yeah, that's what she was. And allegedly transported the for him and did it with him. And she received the funds after she was done being the S worker. Is it giving Cassie? I don't fucking know, bitch. Let's get into it. Now, this section of the lawsuit looks familiar because this is a section that Little Rod, um, I believe that's like Diddy's, well, was Diddy's producer or something like that. But he was the one saying that Young Miami cousin took advantage of him um, in the whole, you know, Thanksgiving of 2022 debacle. So we're going through line 85 to 88, okay? In Miami, Florida, on Thanksgiving night of 2022, Diddy asked Mr. Jones and DeFrost Taylor to enter the studio bathroom. He asked for a $100 bill because he wanted to do with him. Mr. Jones was scared, but luckily he didn't have a $100 bill, so Mr. Combs waited to do um, a little later with Young Miami. Later that evening, he required Mr. Jones to solicit S workers from Bobby Trap on the river located at that address and mr jones did so and mr combs forced him to engage in unsolicited intimate acts with those workers child basically the accountant will make sure that the money would get to the s workers and frankie moy brendan and kk would also be responsible for ensuring payment to s workers in cash young miami jade and daphne joy were paid a monthly fee to work as mr combs s workers and receive payment via wire transfer from Robin Greenhill, which outlined defendants ongoing criminal operation. Child, if you see right here per the lawsuit, one time Diddy wanted to so bad after one of his dealers forgot it that Young Miami brought it to him on a private jet. And child, if you look down here, they confiscated his electronics. So we will be getting more tea soon. Young Miami, you in danger, girl. <laughs> Anyway, Diddy broke his silence through his lawyer, and let's read what he said. So, this report from TheExpress.com says Diddy breaks silence to slam witch hunt and gross overuse of military level force. Diddy's attorney, Aaron Dreyer, said there was no excuse for the excessive show of force and hostility exhibited by authorities after his LA and Miami homes were raided. Sean Diddy Combs has broken his silence after his homes were raided by Homeland Security, slamming them as a witch hunt. Homeland Security agents descended on Diddy's properties in LA and Miami on Monday with Fox 11's live news segment of the raid showing Diddy's sons King and Justin seemingly in handcuffs. Aaron Dyer, an attorney for the rapper, broke Diddy's silence just over 24 hours after the raids began. Dyer said, yesterday there was a gross overuse of military level force as search warrants were executed at Mr. Combs' residence, etc., etc. He added, Mr. Combs was never detained but spoke to and cooperated with authorities. Despite media speculation, neither Mr. Combs nor any of his family members have been arrested nor has their ability to travel been restricted in any way. It comes after Diddy was spotted pacing in Miami's Opa-Laka Executive Airport. So they're calling it a witch hunt. They're saying there was no reason that this should have happened. Here's the thing. Homeland Security does not come with those literal tanks unless they have evidence. They are not sending all of these vehicles to your home unless they have evidence of something. And they don't just do this in one week. That's the thing, right? It's not like people are saying it's because of Cassie. No, it's not because of Cassie. I think that Cassie, first of all, Cassie was likely building her lawsuit for years before she actually came forward. But the other thing to keep in mind is that it's not just Cassie's lawsuit. 
Usually, these kinds of busts or these kinds of raids are planned years in advance. They have probably been tracking this man's phone, people around him's phones, tracking his whereabouts, looking at everything this man is doing for years and years and years. So to say, oh, they just pulled up, no, 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 no. Y'all are ridiculous. That's not how it works. Also, Young Miami, Miss Carisha, she's under heat. Let's talk about it. So, um, excuse me. Young Miami accused of transporting pink cocaine to Diddy in lawsuit. The City Girls rapper was named in an amended lawsuit from Rodney Lil Rod Jones, who filed an actual assault lawsuit against Diddy last month. This is a complex article. We'll read a little bit. So Young Miami is being accused of a serious crime in connection to Sean Diddy Combs and his recent legal issues. An amended lawsuit from Rodney, Lil Rod Jones, a producer who claims he was actually abused by Diddy, says the 30-year-old City Girls rapper, born Carisha Romika Brownlee, transported pink cocaina, or Tusi for the music mogul, according to court documents obtained by XXL. In the additional 25 pages of the filing, Lil Rod claims that Combs enjoys using pink cocaine, otherwise known as a combination of ecstasy and that he would get from his alleged drug mule, Brendan Paul, which, by the way, the drug mule was allegedly arrested this week. Jones alleges uh, that he partners excuse me, that he personally witnessed Diddy using co cocaine in the dressing room while rehearsing for Pharrell's Something in the Water Festival in Virginia, where he made a surprise appearance. Defendant Sean Combs wanted to see, but Brendan forgot it. So defendant Christina Corum called Young Miami, who then brought it on the private jet from Miami. Baby. So this man was in Virginia at Something in the Water, and he needed it so bad that she got on the plane and brought it. There's also allegations that she was an ex-worker for Diddy and that she was paid after she finished transporting and doing actual things for him. So it's not looking good. It's not looking good for young Miami, okay? This is... This is what happens when you get involved with these sus men. This is what happens because it's not looking good for her either. There's a lot of allegations. So that's what we got going on with Diddy. Let's keep going. Next story, Gypsy Rose Blanchard. If you guys remember, Gypsy Rose is the girl that offed her mom after her mom abused her. She just recently got out of prison. She has announced that she is done. Her and her husband, they are done after three months. This is a CBS News article. Let's get into it. Gypsy Rose Blanchard announced on her private Facebook that she and her husband, Ryan Anderson, have separated three months after she was released from prison for her role in the of her mother. The announcement came just weeks after Blanchard deleted her highly followed TikTok and Instagram accounts. Uh, let's not get into the background. Okay, so it was during her sentence that she met her husband, Ryan Anderson, a special education teacher from Louisiana. The pair wed in July 2022, but on Thursday, she announced the two have broken up. People have been asking what is going on in my life. Unfortunately, my husband and I are going through a separation and I moved in with my parents home down the bio. She wrote on her private Facebook account in a statement obtained by People Magazine. I have the support of my family and friends to help guide me through this. I am learning to listen to my heart. Right now, I need time to let myself find who I am. So remember, she got married to this man literally three months after she was released from prison and going through all she went through, you can only imagine that that was a whirlwind and that was quick. I think obviously most of us would probably believe that she was not in the proper headspace to even make a decision such as wanting to get married or anything like that. So in terms of that, you know, I hope she's happy. I hope it was amicable. I know her case is very 
controversial. And, you know, I ain't gonna get my hot takes on her case. But I think at the end of the day, when it comes to folks who are abused, I just hope that it was all amicable, that it wasn't a situation where either side is feeling pressured or forced into anything. And that's all I got there. And those are our big news stories. But girl, it's Beyonce Day. Okay, it's Beyonce Day. I got my Renaissance shirt on because it's Beyonce Day. Cowboy Carter was released today. I've already given it three listens, y'all, and I just am always blown away at Beyonce's level of artistry. <laughs> like, I'm not even saying this as someone who loves Be Down or anything like that. I genuinely think there are very few artists that I can think of that can execute so many genres of music flawlessly. Flawlessly, flawlessly, flawlessly. First off, love her down for giving us an album that's like an hour and 12 or 15 minutes. I believe the CD has an extra song. So let's just say we're going to get like an hour and 20 minutes of content. Love be down for that. I know it's interludes, but I do feel like the album is a an absolute masterpiece. Masterpiece, masterpiece, masterpiece. Now, I'm in the camp where I don't think she's going to tour for this album. Personally, I feel like it's going to be crazy for her to do back to back world tours. And we know Beyonce is very private. So I'm not expecting a tour from her, but I am hoping we at least get a visual album. OK, give us a visual album. Give us the visuals. People are saying that she teased the visuals for Renaissance in the lyric uh, visualizer. So I have to go and watch all of those. But the album is phenomenal. The thing about Beyonce is her voice is so good. Some of the standout songs for me, Jolene. I know people are mad about the pick me lyrics of Jolene, but like her voice on that hook. When she says that Jolene, 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 oh girl, I was like, baby, that joint sounds amazing. Amazing. Her voice sounds so good on Jolene. It's not even funny. Bodyguard is another phenomenal song. I love Bodyguard. I love like her voice. I love her voice. Can we talk about the transitions, by the way? The transitions on this album, sensational, sensational. Daughter. I love daughter. I love daughter. I love, love, love daughter. I love daughter. Um, Tyrant, the beat on Tyrant is fire. The beat on Tyrant is fire. Let's get into the collabs. Miley, first off, can we talk about how she did real collabs? Because you know nowadays, celebs say a collab, it's a feature. They have their song, they record their verses separately and then just insert it all together. Beyonce and Miley was singing together. Together. Them voices melded together. Beyonce's voice and Miley's voice? Oh, that harmony girl. I mean, I think Miley has a phenomenal voice, okay? I know she's controversial, but I think Ma Miley has a very good voice. Who else? Post Malone. Look, I'm not a Post fan, but baby, that collab was amazing. His voice sounded so good. So good. So good. What is the name of that song? I, I forgot the name of the song. Levi's Jeans. His voice sounds so good. And his voice goes really well with, with hers by butter. Same with Two Most Wanted, butter, butter, butter. River Dance is another song. River Dance is also like such a unique song. Also that instrument in Desert Eagle, what is that? What is that? Oh girl, the album is phenomenal, okay? I ordered a box set. It's supposed to get here on Monday, so I'm really excited to hear the extra song. Um, but overall, I 
I am constantly blown away with the artistry of Beyonce. I think the album was a great length. I think that the album works well as a body of work. I do think obviously there is a few standout songs, the ones that I mentioned, but I think as a full body of work, the album flows so well. It's so good to listen to. And you know what? I love how it's Beyonce's take on country because you know, some of the critics have already been saying it's not a full country. It's Beyonce's take on country. It's Beyonce's take on country. Because think about it. Country as a black genre, I feel like sounds very different than a lot of the like white mainstream country music we've heard of these days. So it's like for her to put all of these influences in, it even has kind of like almost an old school rock feel or like an indie rock feel on certain songs. And I love it. So girl... Act 2 is amazing. I'm still going to listen to it again, but that's where I want to end off this video, y'all. Thank you so much for listening, for always supporting me. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. It does help the content to continue growing, and I will talk to you guys in the next one. Thank you.